What's up, guys? My name is Mad Squash 924 Welcome back to another episode of Kona Part 3. As you see, we're at Blaze's house, and, um, my, uh, truck is here. I don't remember my truck being here, do you? I thought we were on foot. Well, that's fine. If we're on foot, then, um, I'm okay with that, really. That's weird, our truck is here. I don't remember leaving our truck here. Hmm. Well, regardless, <clears throat> now that we are in our truck, I think I want to go back towards the um, general store area. I want to see if I missed anything at the general store. I feel like I did. Maybe I didn't, but I feel like we might have missed something there because that area seems pretty prominent. Let's just make sure we're going the right way. And then once we um, go to the general store and check out that whole little area, we will go and um, take a look at the other area near the like the uh, doctor's house and shit, you know? Should be our next left here. I remember there was a wolf here when we stopped here last, which is partially why I want to be here. How do I get out? There we go. That truck is so damn loud, it's ridiculous. The thing I wanted to check out, <clears throat> not the general store itself, but I remember there was tracks, right? Yeah, these tracks. I kind of want to follow that. And I kind of am suspecting that it's going to lead to something. At least to some ice thing, at the very least. And it does eventually lead to le these other three buildings as well. Okay. Will we see the wolf along the way? I hope not. But I'm hoping we find something worth a value for us. Like a gun and a person. No wolf could have done that. A shiver ran down Carl's spine as he glanced over another body trapped in ice. Indeed, the scene was quite chilling. Oh. Familiar shivers going down his spine, and he was back to the realm of visions. What are you talking about? It looks like he got killed by a wolf to me. To all appearance, all right. this was a hunting war. <clears throat> Better yet, a war diary. I was going to read it, sir. Mysterious Journal, page one. The beast enjoys long slumbers. Its sanctuary seems impregnable. Ice is everywhere. I need to exercise patience and wait for it to come out. To think like a hunter. The beast often invades, invades the settlements bordering the lake. It terrorizes the white people. They never see it coming. But they feel its presence. A cold dread grabbing at your innards. The beast excites the wolves. Makes them more aggressive. What attacked me? I had to cut its throat. The blade digging into its flesh made the sound of a tout wire. The beast is getting closer to the villagers. It moves at night, bringing heavy snow and strong gusts of wind along with it. I tracked it to no avail. I do not know the white man frozen in ice, but I do know this. It is the work of the beast. It attacks curdle the blood of its victims. White men know nothing of this force of nature. I touched the ice imprisoning the white man. I saw things, but I do not understand them. Is the journal of like an Indian? Because they're talking about the white man like he's an Indian? I don't know. What could these engraved numbers be? 733. A fresh path suddenly appeared before Carl. Have we seen anything that needs a combination? I don't remember. If we do, I don't remember. So the wolves, so 
What is this beast? It's, in, it's implying that there's other things other than wolves. Carl A had that feeling you get when you immerse your frozen hands in hot water. What happened? Now at least Same he knew who the unfortunate man petrified in ice was. Jules Lenchach? The general store Jules manager Lange. himself. Oh. Well, I mean, it's good that we found that out. That had to be the worst parking job ever. Who was Carl to judge, though? It may be customary sure. to park like that around these parts. Or not. Where are we? Um, Lashance's house is actually just south of us. Do we want to take the truck there, though? Probably. We should also probably check out and see if there's anything that requires a combination, I guess, inside. Something that involves a 733 for a combination. I mean, there shouldn't be anything, right? <clears throat> It's been a little while since we've been back here. Didn't even travel half the province of Quebec to come here. Waste is a mess. What's this? Oh, nice. A nice picture of the Magasin La Chance store, seemingly taken the day it was first opened. It feels frozen in time, from an era long forgotten. It's a flyer. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that requires anything. Why would we climb up here? Is there something up here that I missed? Not really. Hmm. And we've already gotten in register, right? Unless we did it. No, it's just like money. We don't need the pumps. And there was nothing in the garage. We definitely did everything in the garage. So yeah, let's go to LaChance's house. Go back to the ladder's truck imaginable. All right, so if we follow this road, it'll be our first building on the left. See, there's Lachance's truck. Where's his road? So we'll see what comes up. This fence must be it. Has to be. Should I check his mail? It's a good thing. To Mr. Gelage Lachan in South Maniston. Dear Mr. Lachan. We have carefully taken note of your complaint regarding the collapse of a natural cave on your property. However, given the absence of any actual damage or injury, we cannot move forward with this investigation. The natural cave cannot be considered a personal belonging. Furthermore, in your claims regarding the landslides caused by the work in the new DW Incorporated mine seem outlandish. As the mine is miles away from your property, also it is imperative that you secure your property as you could be held accountable for any injuries caused by the steep terrain. This is where Crying Wolf leads you. He has a cave nearby in his house? By his house? Let's check that out. And his house. It's a good thing we checked his mail. I mean, he's dead anyway. It's not like he's gonna miss it.
All right. Point to the map. This is his house. And looks like if we keep going that way, it leads back to the road. So somewhere at La Chance's house, there is a cave nearby. We'll keep that in mind. The air was Whoa. freezing right down to the bone. The otherworldly ice had struck again. The woman's hopes and dreams were frozen in eternity. The hopes and dreams. Seven three three was hidden under the stairs. Right there. The man Sus. grabbed his rifle. Carl felt a sense of dread in him. You think he has another rifle stashed away? Maybe. We're trying to Lachance in 1948. Perhaps their spousal relationship had been cooling down lately. Hmm. It seemed like secrecy was commonplace in this house. Yeah, it's weird. There's a note hidden here. Well, let's take a look at that. Vision's veil was lifted, and he was back to reality. A reality in which Giselle, Jill's loving spouse, was motionless, frozen in ice. September. Mother once told me when I first met Giselle that I hadn't picked the brightest bulb of the lot. And as the years fly by, I'm seeing the truth of her words. Always trust your mother's wisdom. The blackmailing scheme is a prime example of Giselle's brightness. He's like a small dog. He thinks he's bigger than he actually is. He growls, genuinely thinking he's scary, but everyone knows he can be pushed aside with just a little kick. He truly believes he can blackmail Hamilton, the big boss himself. It's going to be a long time in hell before my poor Jules can manage to pull off such a feat. After all, Hamilton's a rich, learned, and influential man. Not only is the blackmailing idea had bad to begin with, let's be honest. Gilles? Gilles? Hey, I can't say his name. Gilles? Eh, whatever. Is way out of his league, but Gilles doesn't even know how he's actually going to carry this out. I don't even think he ever would. He's just throwing a random threats out loud in the kitchen. He says he'll do it eventually, but I know better. Successful blackmailing requires masterful cunning and Gilles is master of nothing. He is a slave, and forever will be. I often look at that safe he keeps hidden in the fake wall in which he stores all these incriminating documents he intends to use, and I just can't come to grips with the sheer ridiculousness of the whole thing. Can we light this thing up? It's freaking cold in here. There we go. I want to take a look at this first. Carl had seen that kind of safe before. With its double layered security system blending letters and numbers, its code couldn't be broken by the common burglar. Can we take a look at other things we have? No, that's not helpful. Um. Oh, sections. Okay. Um...
I know it's 733. These photos. Oh, 739 is what it is. But what letter is it? Gelet? Seven. Three. Nine. I mean, I could try this all day. Seven, three, nine. I don't know what the first letter would be. We know it's seven, three, nine. Hmm. What would... I don't know what would lead us to find a letter, though. It's the thing. I mean, we know the combination. We just don't know the letter that it's referring to. It's gonna be every freaking letter possible, isn't it? And I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get the last possible one. Maybe there isn't a good way to find that out. Maybe we actually have to be guessing, like that. Hey, Crouch, receive the thingy. Thank you. Comprising document. William Hamilton is a crook. He has been blackmailing everyone in the village, myself included, like the infamous Seraphim Prudrier. And this document is proof of every bribe paid by Hamilton to the federal authorities in regard to the acquisition of his damn mine. The fact that he has used his henchmen to instill terror within the village will not sway the tribunals down in Montreal. But the fact that he has been bribing government officials surely will. I can already picture it making the front page. The English are all the same. We will prevail. Hamilton is not only a crook, but a murderer. I do not believe in his remorse. I firmly believe he will pay for his crime. I do not believe in native magic, but I do believe in their vengeance. I see. Let's take a look at everything else around the house then. In the meantime. Let's see if we can find anything of value. Other than the poor lady that's deceased. was cold, and the stew inside wasn't cooked. It's likely that poor Giselle was slow cooking it before she got snapped. What a waste. Looks like the holes in that puzzle are there to stay. So it would seem. Looks like they were repainting the whole house. Were, keyword. The unpacked boxes suggest they moved here. Painkillers. That window had seemingly been left open for a while, Carl thought. Given the punishing weather, it couldn't have been intentional. I have yet to find a clock that works. It felt like old people were all these walls could see for years. The Lachances could hardly be blamed for wanting to freshen things up a bit. Oh, so the reason that says B, and then we have the code, is is stands for Bertrand Lachance. That makes sense. I didn't put that together. What a mess. Clearly, there was some major revamping work underway here. 
the place looked barely habitable. Beautiful portrait of Gilles and Giselle, bound together by the chains of conventional love. Yep. The cross looked after a marriage's well-being and served as a motivator to uphold the priest's sermons calling for more little worshippers on one hand and cautioning against guilty pleasures on the other. Indeed, the Lachances were still part of the God-fearing generation. A box full of Harley Quinn novels. A nice white coating would restore the room to its charm of olden days. It looks like they didn't like the look of this place. Many boxes scattered about. Carl didn't need to summon his detective training to quickly figure that the Lachances had just moved in. Oh, more film. A nice white coating would restore the room to its charm of olden days. Many boxes scattered about. Carl didn't need to summon his detective training to quickly figure that the Lachances had just moved in. I think that's the extent of this place, right? Oh, moving. What a pleasant activity. Of course, you'll find the record player only Hello. to find the records weeks later in some random box. Says Lachance changes hands. The general store, along with several more infrastructures in the area, had been acquired by wealthy industrialist William J. Hamilton. Perhaps the village should be rechristened Hamiltown. Founded by Bertrand Lachat more than 20 years ago, the general store, better known as Chez Lachat, is one of the Madison's economic mainstays. Since the passing of its aged owner, however, business wasn't as blooming as it once was. Chez Lachat, interior uh, inheritor of the humble establishment had no choice but to sell everything to William Hamilton, the rich and famous businessman who sparked a major controversy last year when he announced the reopening and expansion of his copper mine. As of now, operations at the general store are expected to remain unchanged despite the change of hands. Chagela Lechon still helms the register. Okay, I think that's all the information we can gather from this place. Um, that was a lot of information. We know a little bit more about this town. Oh, there's a cave nearby too, right? You said there was a cave nearby this place. Would that be this way? One could interpret. But I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. I think we already taken a picture of that. Yeah, because there's Gilles, Gilles, whatever his name is. That's his body. So where would this supposed cave be then? I don't know. To be around here? I mean, I would like to find this cave that was referred to in his uh, letter. Right? No, not that. It's hard to navigate this sometimes. Trying to read and skim it. There's the murder. I mean, we're just going around his house at this point. That the cave? Yep. We found it.
We need dynamite to open this cave up so we can look inside it. All right, that's a mental note we get, we should take. When we find dynamite, we have to come back here. Meaning we can find dynamite at all, which is good. It's just to the right of his house. Is it marked on the map now that we've seen that? It is, thank goodness. Okay, let's go to the next building. I believe... Yeah, it's just across the street. So we follow this to the end of the road. We take our immediate right and then our immediate left. There it is. You think they have anything in their mailbox? Treasure map. That's over by Cabin B. Hmm. May this treasure hunt begin. I have it hidden wonderful so little things for you to find over the Carl village. Did not feel his toes anymore. Hmm. There's a lot of clues. Let's go and check out this building that we're at. So the game is implying us that we go back to Cabin B to go find treasure. Maybe there is more clues here at Badard's house? About how one can find said treasure? Alright, what do we have here? Hardware. Any dynamite? A true Catholic always strives to keep lowly temptations at bay. Obviously, Carl thought, someone in this house wasn't doing a good job at upholding the Holy Bible's teachings. That's okay. We're gonna find out. That's a lot of information in there. Well, not information, but, uh, items. Let me guess. What was even the point of locking your door? If everyone hid their key in the same place? Carl was starting to feel like his investigator life lacked challenge. The house smelled like incense. The kind that reminds you of the good Lord, of peace. It's different. Religion was very influential throughout Quebec many years ago. Indeed, it was surprising that Carl did not come across a single chapel since arriving here. Polaroid film. I want to make sure we explore this house before we end the episode. Let's fill the bottle. Is there a way to check what we have for items? Is it the start button? Yeah, it is. We have a lot of things. I forgot we had a gun. Oh yeah, we have a crowbar too. I forgot we had such a thing. Consumables. Inventory. We have a lot of crap. We might have to store some things in the truck pretty soon here. What? That just leads outside. What's the fucking point of... whatever. Blocking that door if that door is just gonna be open. Enough food for rough times. The hell? Who the fuck hangs diapers like this? The family's mother must have spent her days washing the filth off her kids' diapers. I hate that. That's disgusting.
Who knew that giraffes thrived in the North Pole? The praise for toys was stupefying. Right. Love of religion and ancestors was rooted deep inside the hearts of Canadians of old, to which the Bedards appeared to be closely related. Hello, Sylvie's diary. Jean-Luc never Bedards had a knack for mathematics. Carl gathered they would be of no help. Try as he might, he'll never realize that he simply cannot be the father of the child I'm bearing, but how can I be sure? Have to keep this a secret, at least, until the time is right, when it will be safe. August 16th. Dr. Biopier told me it would start showing soon that I couldn't keep it hidden forever. Gotta muster courage, he said, with his usual condescending tone. Courage to face what's coming. But he doesn't get it at all. For him, I just a childish affair. He doesn't realize I brought the eternal damnation upon myself. September 14th. Mary is very sick and Jean-Luc plunges into despair. I told him nothing but the evil growing inside me. Sometimes I get the feeling he can see right through me. My Marie is suffering and I am one to blame. Or my Mary suffering? Oh Lord Almighty, why do children have to pay for their parents' sins? Mm -hmm. Why'd you fuck up? Ever think of that? Hmm? No? Whatever. Bingo! We found it! Hmm. Hello. Mary's diary, or Marie? Shame that the family had bailed. Carl would have had a few questions for Jean-Luc, a close friend of Hamilton's. August 16th. I have a diary just like Mum. Unlike her, though, I don't wear a long face when writing. But I do love to write my thoughts. And about Martin, most of all. I love talking about him. I think he loves me too, just like in Romeo and Juliet. People don't like it when I see him, only because he's a blaze. But just like in the story, nothing can stand in the way of true love. August 18th. I lost appetite and can't sleep anymore. Every waking hour, intense shivers run through my body. That's making me see Dr. Boupier. With his big hands touching me everywhere, his foul breath exhaling all over my face. Yeah. I'm not sick, I'm in love. I love Martin so much. There's nothing I like better than thinking about us playing together. Like we always do. I wonder if he found the key I lost the other day. It was pretty sad when I did because it was for his dad's garden shed. And Martin has always been afraid of him. I think Martin's dad is a bit like that God. The key fell in a burrow next to the shed. Poor Martin, he cried like a baby, but I still love him. I do recall a key following, like, inside of, like, a little burrow. We don't know how we're going to get that out of there still. Unless, unless maybe we use something like the crowbar. I don't know how we're going to get that out of there. But I do recall that. Works of art from a future artist. Well. The perfect cookie-cutter Catholic family. Most likely attending church every Sunday. Let's take a look at the map here. Um, I want to check out Roy's house before we end today's episode. Usually I would end it right about now. But I do want to check out Roy's house. So we have like a clear line of this whole road. I was going to go to the doctor's house and go through that whole direction. But I didn't end up going that way. Maybe else for the best. Partially because uh, the house of Le Champ actually happened to be relative to the bodies, so I think that was most of the reason why I decided to go that way instead. Okay. Let's uh, back this up. Alright. So we're going to have to take a right and then it's to our next right is where we're going. Yeah, ordinarily though we would end the episode here, but I do want to check out this last house. Because this game is very interesting and um, the fact that if it, it's been so long since I've been playing this game, like a week almost. So 
I would hate to like forget of what's going on because it's easy to forget in this game because there's so much going on in this game that it's kind of hard to follow every little story there is. Gotta know there's more mail. Letter from or, uh, Wilfred. Dear Mr. Roy, I'm writing this because I feel guilty. The other day, Martin and I were taking a stroll to not far from your house, and we saw that the door to your shed was open. I wanted us to mind our own business, but Martin likes living on the edge. He took a few shiny things, including some bullets. Now, my dad always told me never to play with those things, so I immediately put them back. But Martin did hit the other things. I confess, Mr. Roy, I have so many regrets, but you mustn't call the police. You wouldn't call them, will you? My father would be so angry. I will bring back all your things, I promise. Marie Badad. Okay. So, they took bullets. We didn't see any bullets in that house. So I imagine she brought them back. Or at the very least, we'll find bullets out of his house. Oddly enough, we have yet to see anybody alive in this whole entire um, place. I think I'm going to do some item dumping here while we're at this place. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because it appears we are kind of over encumbered. That's good enough. Alright, so it's just this house. I have a little dog house too. It was a classic Canadian house. Except for the absent horde of kids that would normally be swarming about. No, from Jean Roy. We fled, it was getting too dangerous. More people live in North Maniston. It will be safer there. Jean Roy. Well, don't mind me. I'm just gonna loot your house. Because I'm a detective, obviously. Cookie jars are always too high to reach. I wonder if that's where the bullets are kept. It's possible. Did you close all this shit? There we go. So I can open this one up. Okay. Matches. Simone de Beauvoir, Claude Lévi-Strauss, Hannah Arendt, Roland Barthes. Carl was surprised by the literature filling this liberal-leaning bookcase. Could there really be intellectuals dwelling in this far-off land? The Fantasy, page one. Matthew had yet to add murderer to his curriculum. He was fond of new experiences, especially the most thrilling ones in taking the life of a flesh and bone individual who the night before was still able to think, dream, fantasize, calculate, read, held the promise of exhilarating sensations, unlike Raskolnikov. It wasn't about an axing an old Jewish hag to pieces to test some lunatic theory, not at all. Matthew just wanted to know how it felt. It seemed so simple, horribly simple. He didn't have any particular victim in mind, like most people, he desired, his desires ran quite wildly, so he only had a vague idea of them in mind. He pondered using a rifle, or a knife, assassinating a young girl or old man, he tried to focus on practicability. His victim would have to be defenseless. Bodybuilding wasn't exactly Matthew's strong suit. He would have to act spontaneously, but not too much. He wasn't that eager to learn what spending the rest of his life in prison would be like. Some experiences carry just too high a cost to be worth it, really. So it's a book that he's typing out. 
Just one more move and White is checkmated. Game over. It seems the game was abandoned right before the final strike came down. So it would seem. We check this fridge? Yeah, we did. The couple radiated something akin to lightheartedness, to freedom. Perhaps some people out there truly found a way to live happily ever after. A picture of Wilfred in his youth. Carl figured right away that the man must have been some kind of wildlife officer. Don't know. I want to find his gun and bullets. The fantasy page two. It was around the time that Matthew met Beatrice of the mediocre beauty at best. The girl and with her distinctive features, cheeks covered with a large ox-like freckles, drew nose, oily forehead, tired but vibrant eyes, shaded red hair, slender as a child's body, chirpy laugh, you name it. It was very image of innocence. That happened to be precisely the kind of victim Matthew was picturing in his mind, though. One night as he was contemplating the ceiling from his bed, he swore to himself again and again, I'll kill her. His dreams were later filled with images of the imminent crime. He had come up with a simple enough plan. One fine evening, he would visit her place to become familiar with the area's intricacies and feel closer to the impending murder, to slowly dig into Beatrice's thoughts, desires, dreams, and abilities. This way, he would be able to get a concrete sense of what his sinister deed would be stripping away from the very fabric of life. The whole thing would take two days, a week at most. It's a weird book. Canopoly! Canopoly, you win if you pass go. All manners of clothing were gone, as if the Droids drove out of town with their closet in tow. Something. Is this page three? Page four. Where's page three? The first time he met Beatrice, however, she unexpectedly revealed her troubles and origins to Matthew. She was adopted at the age of four, and recalling her former life still gave her a hard time. She played the piano in so graceful a manner that people often thought she may be a natural offspring of a musical virtuoso. She always cried before falling asleep, torn from the inside by a dreadful pain she couldn't explain. She confided in him so proudly that Matthew couldn't get enough, coming back every night to learn every single thing that would come out of the delicate mouth after pulling one last breath out of it. Every night, he reflected on what death of Beatrice would mean if terms of loss, of losses to humanity's common heritage, be it the sound of her sobbing or of her piano melodies, the compulsive tapping of her long index finger on her temple when she harbored dark thoughts or any other little thing. It didn't matter. Everything would in indiscriminately vanish. Everything. All these thoughts made for some blissful slumber indeed. Then days became weeks, and before he knew it, it was Matthew's turn to throw his secrets at her. His hopes, his cries of despair, as if throwing coins in a wishing well. She'll be dead by the end of the month, he promised himself. Um, can I see the other one? The other note? I want to read more about the fantasy. Or page four of it. Because I didn't exactly want to read them out of order. Oh, it doesn't look like I can. That sucks. Damn it. Not a single weapon was left. All of them were gone. So they were. Ah, bullets. 303? I don't think that's the same... That's not the same ammo type as this. Hmm. It's not. It's definitely different. 
Can we have this thing? Is that the extent of this house? There's nothing else, correct? This was just like a storage unit? Yep. And this led outside. Let me just double check outside. There's wolf tracks leading out here, though. Let's check this out. Whoa, there's fucking wolves out here. Hey, I need you not to be in such a bad aim. Get out of here. Damn it, I can't get that. There is something in there, but we need a magnet. Let's take a look inside. More ammo. <gasps> the magnet! We finally found it. Can I use the magnet? Just the mag- Ooh, and an axe? An axe. Fuck Not yeah. Too shabby. Carl felt he needed to protect himself. That's awesome. So can I use a magnet now? I gotta, like, attach a rope to it. How does one do that? No, really, how does one make the magnet? Has to have, like, a string or something attached to it. But we have the magnet portion now, which is... awesome. Oh, I wish there was, like, string in here. Oh, a hammer, too? Fucking inventory's full. That's so not good. Let's, um... Let's get rid of some matches. I guess the log. What can I use this hammer for? I have a lot of blunt things nowadays. Yeah, I wish I could pick that up. Well, Polaroid film. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing much else of anything, unfortunately. That really sucks. Well, I guess this is a good spot for us to end today's episode of Kona. This went on definitely longer than it usually would have been. I um, hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have, make sure you guys have a like, leave a comment. Tell me what you think of today's episode, of course, and if you're new to my channel or have been watching me for a little while and you haven't done so as of yet, feel free to subscribe to me, Mad Squash 924 and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified of my latest videos. On the next episode, I think we might follow this trail of tracks for a bit. And then I do want to head back to our truck and take a look at some of these other things. And I need to figure out a way to get, like, the magnet and string combined. Because, um, I don't have a way to do that yet. Or maybe I should look up where we can find, like, a string or a magnet string. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I'll see you all then on the next episode of Kona. Goodbye, everybody.